Now let's finally add the environment to the picture. The way we conceptualize the problem with pollution is external cost. The word external means outside the firm. The cost that we've talked about so far, including what we termed quote unquote total cost, was the cost that the firm knows it's incurring in order to buy the labor from workers, buy inputs, rent land and equipment, and so forth. External costs are costs imposed by the firm on people outside the firm. The classic example would be pollution victims. The firms don't care about external costs in general because they don't affect profit in general, but society certainly cares about external costs, and economists were interested in what's good for society, not what's good for individual firms. So we are going to conceptualize the problem with pollution as being external cost, and we'll abbreviate it EC. We're going to draw a lot of graphs in this class, and so the next question is going to be, if Q is the output of the firm, how is the output of the firm going to affect external cost? And we're going to be a little bit lazy and abstract and just consider one kind of relationship between Q and external cost, and that's this one. In Econ 5250, I go through a 20-minute discussion of all the different possible relationships between external cost and output, but this is the easiest one to think about. If we, uh, if, if we analyze external cost this way, then what it means is that the external cost is rising more quickly than Q. So if Q is small, then a one unit increase in Q increases external cost this much. But if Q is big, then, a w then the same one unit increase in Q increases external cost this much. So the idea here is that one extra unit of pollution is not very damaging if you don't have a very polluted environment. But if you do have a very polluted environment, then one, unit of, one extra unit of pollution is very damaging. And so the extra damage caused by an additional unit of pollution is not the same. It varies from left to right. Unsurprisingly, that is connected to marginal external cost. In fact, marginal external cost is just the slope of the external cost curve. And it's rather easy to derive that, at least in at least as far as the sketch is concerned. Let's just take two values of Q. We want to draw tangent lines. Get my straight edge. And so that would be the tangent line at the first um, first level of Q. And that would be the tangent line second level of Q. I think I need to erase part of that. So we have, let me label, this was the first one, this is the second one, this is the Q1, this is Q2. This is called dollars per unit because these are measuring the slope of the blue lines, the slope is rise over run, the rise is measured in dollars, the run is measured in Q, which is units, so rise over run, dollars over unit. Both of these are have positive slopes, because the blue lines are going up as you go from left to right, but 2 is steeper than 1, and so whatever the marginal of the second one is, it's going to be bigger than the marginal of the first one. So MEC is going up here, and 
we're going to be lazy and just assume that it's a straight line. It, it, it doesn't have to be a straight line. In fact, it probably won't be. But, it, but, but what we do know is that it's, it is rising. It's positive and it's rising. That's what's important. It's positive and it's rising. Now, how we measure external costs is something that we're going to be talking about quite extensively in another chapter. Um, briefly, we don't have great ways of measuring it. In theory, the way we measure it is to ask people, for example, how much are you willing to pay to decrease pollution? Or how much money are you willing to accept if we make the environment dirtier? How much money would you accept to say, well, you're okay with that? These are, uh, these are imperfect measures, partially because people don't, often don't really know how to answer these questions, partially because people might not be willing to honestly answer these questions, um, and also because people's um, willingness to pay or willingness to accept, which are formal terms that we'll get to later, depend on their income. And so you're usually giving a lot more weight to rich people than to poor people when you measure things in that way. Now, there are alternatives, and there are alternatives that don't give rich people an advantage, but these are alternatives that are not widely used. I personally think they ought to be more widely used, but, but they're not. So for now, we're going to set aside the question of how is external cost measured and just, um, uh, just assume that it is measured and that it has these kind of properties. So then the question we're going to ask is, we already know what, how the firm wants to pick a quantity. Right? What the firm wants to do, the firm faces a total revenue curve. It faces a total cost curve. And by the way, the word total, of course, means total just for the firm. Society wants to also include external cost in this. External cost is not included in TC. Now, why is external cost not included in total cost? Well, because the term total cost is used in all other areas of economics that don't have pollution and don't have external cost. And environmental economists didn't want to use the word total in a way that contradicted the way every other economist uses the word total. And so total cost in this class isn't the best phrase because it doesn't include external cost, but we're sort of stuck with it. So what the firm wants to do, as we saw last time, was it wants to go to where profit is biggest, which is going to be it's roughly here, where the gap between total revenue and total cost is the largest in a positive direction. You don't want to go way on the right, where there's a big gap between total revenue and total cost, but it's because total revenue is small and profit's negative. So that's what the firm wants to do. What does society want to do? In other words, so the firm is going to want to go to here. Society, though, wants to take external cost into account. And so society wants to add this external cost function to the total cost function to come up with a, a function that includes all the costs, the total cost that the firm pays, but also the external cost of, of the pollution victims. That is going to generate, so you start with the TC curve, and then you add on EC to it, that's going to generate a curve something like this, TC plus EC. And then society is okay with maximizing profit given the curves that take external costs into account. And so what we're going to see in the next video is that society is going to want the firm to go here where the gap between total revenue and TC plus EC is the smallest. And that means society is, is going to want the firm to go here, which means society is not happy with the firm just doing what it wants to do. The firm just want, the firm all by itself just wants to go here. Society is not happy with that. Society wants the firm instead to be here, 
which is a lower Q, therefore generating less pollution. So we'll see how that works out in the next video.